Good morning. It is. I've been working with the methods and everything for a long time now. And one thing that I keep bumping into, God, I'm nervous. <laughs> one thing I keep bumping into is um, the fact that. We want to talk to you about something about nervousness. So. Okay. You'll never find yourself in a more allowing environment. Correct. And most of what nervousness is about is having something that you want to clarify and trying to find mutuality with anybody else that might be listening in. And you just got to give that up because nobody's right where you are. And so you just got to selfishly go for what you're going for and expect that you're going to get it. And once you start getting the hang of that, you won't find nervousness. Nervousness is about you wondering about what somebody else thinks. So even though you've come to trust us, because you know, if we beat you up, it's all in fun. And we have never beat up anybody that didn't want it and who couldn't take it. In other words, they're just asking for it and wanted it. And everybody else here is really tuned in right now and anticipating benefit from this conversation. And so it's all good. Now you feel less nervous, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Because it basically. Uh, oh, we've used up all your time. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. It basically hits the nail on the head um, because it's a control freakiness that I that I have and. Um, I feel it. What do you think you're trying to control? What they think of you? No, I control every, basically everything I, in, in life. Everything? And that's, in my head, that's what I tend to do. And when I see certain uh, things... Well, being... there's a deliberate creativeness quality to that. You could say that I like to intend and I like to get good results and there's nothing wrong with that. But where it goes a little wonky is when you feel like you need to control someone's response to you and you don't. All you got to control is your response to their response. But how do I let that go? By not giving a rip <laughs> about their response to you. It takes a little practice and it comes from satisfaction, this game, because when you're reaching for alignment or mutuality with your inner being you'll find it easily and when you're reaching for it with others you find it in varying degrees in other words sometimes they're tuned in like your inner being and it's easy these are the variables sometimes your friends tuned in and you're not you're not going to find mutuality unless they join you down here in which case they will hate you your inner being is here and you're here you've got to relax your way into a higher vibration in order to find that mutuality if you're finding mutuality with someone who's here in other words you've deliberately focused with them and so neither one of you are connected to your inner beings you might feel we're there for each other but no true satisfaction and so you just sort of have to play with it a little bit until you're confident about what you're doing and where you are it's just not only people it's uh, also situations and even controlling myself mutuality with experiences let's give what you're talking about a label that's pretty accurate let's call it conditional living this conversation is about turning thoughts to things and conditional living is only looking at what's already been turned into a thing living my life taking those things experiences situations relationships piles of money blah 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 all that manifested stuff and put it in piles of good and bad and right and wrong and wanted and unwanted and trying to control that as compared to understanding that I'm a vibrational being who wants to control we'll use the word control because it applies wants to control my vibrational output because when I control my vibrational output I then control the vibrational input that law of attraction delivers back to me in response to my output because I get what I think about whether I want it or not conditional living conditional life is looking at all the conditions and trying to evaluate through a lot of hard work and effort what's right what's wrong and then trying to control the wrong ones and make it more right so that I can just be lazy in my thinking so I can just be a sloppy thinker because right now if I'm a conditional creator when I see something that I think is a good thing I feel great good job people of the world who are doing that but if I see something I don't want and I feel bad bad job segment of people of the world you need to be different hey other people of the world want to join forces with me and help me make them be more like you oh yeah 
because we're conditional we'd all feel better if everything was just the way we want it to be only problem is you want different things you came with different intentions your life has caused you to put different things in your vortex that's not the path to happiness that's the path to heavy lifting that kind of control is hard you want control of only one thing your own vibrational output and its relationship to the true leverage of the universe which will give you a feeling of invincibility and empowerment that gives you the energy that creates worlds that you can focus through you for your masterful creating so let's walk through some of this we appreciate your openness and let's make it practical well I had a, a long period of about a year and a half that I had some stuff going on in my apartment I had some flooding I had to leave my apartment they had to store all my stuff and I thought okay no idea what why this happened but I looked at the positive aspects of you know it was a chance to improve some things in my apartment while it was being renovated anyway and dried out and then I have this perfect picture in my head of how I want my, you know, a new bathroom, a new toilet, a new floor. And it didn't turn out how I thought it would turn out. And then I feel bad about it. And then that turns into what I call calorie binges. You call it what? Calorie binges. I start eating because I'm not perfect. And that's the control that I'm trying, that, that in my head I can't get rid of. I'm putting up all this resistance and I don't know how to get rid of so it. So let's talk about the way you were processing or interpreting the laws of the universe because you were on track through a lot of that. You experienced some contrast and in this case it was flooding in your apartment. And you were wise to say, I don't know how it happened. I don't know why I'm part of this. We will say because you're a creator wanting to gain control of your vibration regardless of conditions because trying to control things with conditions or trying to control conditions so that you can feel a certain way will lead you down a dead-end rabbit hole that's not what you want you want to understand that it's a vibrational thing not a control thing and it's a controlling of vibration and only yours not a controlling of outcomes or anybody else's vibration because you care about this and you want to know this and you want to master it and your inner being knows you want that you attracted a perfect experience in order to cause you to launch some rockets of desires so you launched some rockets of desires and you're telling us right here and now that you envisioned a different floor what was it what floor did you envision that you wanted the improved floor what was it what, what was that what, what was the floor was? that you wanted what was the floor a that different you wanted? color than what a I different got. color of what I don't get the question well the question is how clear were you about this floor not that clear not that clear I want a Probably. different floor well it's yeah. different <laughs> it is different you see things are always changing but if your vibration doesn't change then things just change to more of the same because everything's always changing now we're just playing with you a little bit but not that much so what you wanted was a floor that wasn't flooded first of all what you wanted was something more substantial you wanted infrastructure in your apartment that was more steady yes correct and did you get that yes so you got the essence of what you want but you didn't necessarily get all of the details and so we want to know from you how much time did you spend thinking about those details and here's the question that is going to help you give us the answer we want <laughs> this is an important thing to know if you're on the satisfied side of this rather than the dissatisfied side of this then one thing leads to another and leads to another and you get lots of momentum and the general intentions turn to details that the universe then provides so that the people that are making decisions are being inspired by a force that they don't really understand and it's just turning out really really well for you to the point that other people around you might be wondering how you ended up with that because why are you more deserving than they are and it's simply because you from your state of satisfaction were able to grow evolve thoughts becoming more into more detail that was not resistant in nature but because you didn't really then know about satisfied and dissatisfied you didn't stay completely on the satisfied side of the equation how long did it take them to fix it all up 
the first time almost the eight first months. Time. And within a month, eight months. within a month, I moved back in early December. By mid January, right after the holidays, I was standing in the kitchen and my floor was wet again, and I just fell down and cried. Let's play with this for just a little bit. During that eight months, how satisfied were you? Were you satisfied or inconvenienced? Were you satisfied or impatient? Were you satisfied or disappointed? Some of all of it, but where do you think the balance? Convenience the most. Yeah, of course you were inconvenienced. You weren't satisfied. And now think about law of attraction and what you know about it. Law of attraction meets you where you are and the momentum of it. When you think a thought and you hold it for just a little bit of time, another thought like it joins it. We're talking about seconds, 17, 16 or 17 seconds, and then another, and then another. And once you cross that 68, 69 70 second mark now you've got enough momentum going that some different things are coming to you but most people are satisfied dissatisfied satisfied dissatisfied satisfied dissatisfied 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 how satisfied really were you holding yourself and it's all right because in the same way that you attracted the experience in order to be clear about what you want you really attracted this experience in order to gain control of your own vibration and so now we're talking about this experience that was very vivid and very real and we're showing you where you could have got control you didn't know it then you know it now but you could have gotten some control and you could have stayed more satisfied with a little bit of caring to be satisfied rather than dissatisfied which is the for sure logical way that almost everybody on the planet would go it is inconvenient to be out of your place and it's inconvenient to have your place torn up and it's inconvenient and then you go down more and more it's easy to go from inconvenience to they just don't care to inconvenience to well if it was their floor i bet they'd be harder after it to inconvenience toward why don't they get somebody in here that knows what they're doing you get lots of other things that you worry about in life begin to dovetail with that and so your satisfaction factor is pretty far away from where you hang out on a pretty regular basis and so when these thoughts turn to things isn't it logical that the things that those thoughts turned to were like the way you'd been feeling you cannot have a happy ending to an unhappy journey you cannot have a satisfied ending to an unsatisfied journey you just can't so is your inner being wanting to beat up on you for not being satisfied when you could have been no your inner being knows that in every moment of dissatisfaction you were putting more clarity into your vortex way more clarity and there will be a time of manifestation not so far from now when you will realize that all of the details that these experiences have caused you to focus into being are now a reality in your experience but it is all dependent upon how satisfied you are as you're moving along the bursting into real life every single moment is a manifestation did you know that right now we're having a manifestation this room is a manifestation our relationships with each other is a manifestation everything here is a manifestation this conversation is a manifestation it's a manifestation of who we are and who you are and who they are as influences and manifest 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 because we're seeing it and we're hearing it and we're smelling it and we're tasting it and we're touching it this is manifestation and the manifestations will continue to improve to be compensate with the satisfaction that you insist upon finding in moment after moment after moment after moment after moment sometimes when we tell this to people in a less evolved way this was really good sometimes what they hear from their distorted viewpoint is oh Abraham just wants me to be satisfied with what is they just want me to put up and shut up they just want me to pretend that I like it so I don't bother them and others that's not what's going on here at all and you worry sometimes that if I don't complain nobody will do anything about it when the opposite is true your complaining holds you in steady decline or deviation from wanted while satisfaction holds you in steady improvement on every single subject in your life helpful yeah.